Hello everybody, welcome back to our long-term Voyager survival run in the long dark. I'm the Gazbeard and we're in one of the cabins at Carter Dam on Mystery Lake with a wolf outside the door that was just about to give us some grief. So, what I want to do is make a long burning torch. Have I got any sticks on me? I've got four, which I think is enough. I've got some cloth on me. I'm stinking of meat because we've got these uncured hides and guts, uh, which are part cured, in fact. Um, we've got a huge amount of lamp oil in the form of this jerry can that we found uh, at the train in the ravine. So let's just craft a big torch, which will take 15 minutes. When I say a big torch, I mean a torch that's going to burn for a long time. Now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to pick up two of the sticks that we left here. And I'm going to make another torch. So that's about 30 minutes we've passed. I'm also going to pass 15 minutes by crafting that set of rose hips and reducing the weight that we're carrying and craft an old man's beard patch. There we go. Right, so if we go back into the inventory and we use that. Light it with the fire striker. Okay, let's hope there's not a big wind outside to blow it straight out. I can hear the wolf. He's definitely behind us on the other side of this cabin. Wimp. Didn't even hit him. Yeah, run away, Fido. We're not as scared of you as you are as of us. Rawr. Go away. And he's lurking down there, look. Feeling very sheepish. Seems to be frozen in place there. We could actually use the flare gun to kill him. However, I'd rather not waste the flare. We need to save that for bigger prey, such as bears. And once we're sufficiently out of his line of sight, we put the flare out. Hello, dear. And. Yeah. Uh, he may go for that deer. Uh, oh, the deer's turned round. I think the deer's safe. Right, so let's put the flare out. Put it away. Save it for future use. Picking up a few sticks to take back to the the camp office. And again, we're going to take the high route, dodge the wolves. I think we've already checked if there's a prepper's cache up here. Usually visible from a little bit further down. And uh, not there. We're heavily overladen. We've got a severe risk of sprains here. So we just need to be a little bit careful on the route we pick to traverse. No preppers cache there. Uh, 
I'm starting to think that one of the ways to avoid sprains, but I have no intrinsic... Yeah, we have no intrinsic evidence for it, is avoid sudden turns when you're on a slope. Now, that's not going to hold true every time because I've had situations where we're walking across a slope like this and bam, double sprains, wrist and ankle. So, try try to observe when sprains happen and what you're doing at the time they happen and it may help it may help you to find methods to avoid them. Now, I'm coming extra high here because the ground is flatter on this top bit. It's going to make it a little bit more difficult for getting down the slope, but I'm not so worried about that. We'll just crouch down and go down slowly. Come on, pick it up. Thank you. Now this next bit is pretty steep. We just want to be a little bit careful going down here. Now all those crows that you can hear are down over those red rail rail cars at the derailment there's two dead bodies down there so you've got a double set of crows down there giving it maximum loudy so still no hacksaw I was hoping there might have been one at the train in the ravine the upper train um, but the more I think about it the less likely that would have been we may have to go into forlorn muskeg to find it go up to the um, poachers encampment at the derailment just inside forlorn muskeg that might be the place to find it I'm not really going to be happy with this run until we do find a hacksaw because it is quite essential for long-term survival. The simple reason being that you can repair the hacksaw without, sorry, with any toolkit at the workbench. In fact, not with any toolkit. You need the red toolkit to repair the hacksaw and a piece of scrap metal. And course once you've repaired a, a hacksaw to 100% one of the first things that you should do is cut yourself some more scrap metal to make sure that you've got that as the material for repairing the hacksaw and there's our red toolkit which we left here we left a bunch of scrap metal here so we've got some more let's just drop it we've got bunch of feathers that we picked up. Let's put them in the workbench. It's getting towards um, sunset. So let's get all our stuff sorted and transferred. Now we've got three saplings to put under the bench. We've got another deer hide and a couple of rabbit hides. So, drop the deer hide there. Perfect positioning, first drop. I'm impressed. Um, drop the rabbits there. Put the 
rabbit skins up on the bench. That way we don't forget about them because they're pretty small. There we are. And we've got a bunch of guts. We've got four guts. Now, even if we never make use of these on this visit to Mystery Lake, by having them here curing, they're available to us the next time that we come. And they will be cured by the time that we come back. So, uh, that's not going to go under there. Alright, I have to try and get it under there. We're running out of daylight, we're running out of food, we need to um, get off Mystery Lake before we put ourselves in dire straits with food. So, flares and stuff go in there. Uh, I'm going to keep three flares with us. I'm going to take those flare shells with us. Right, um, lamp oil. Drop that. Where's it gone? There it is. We'll put that jerry can up there. Come on. That'll do. Um, drop the rope in its usual place on the end of this counter. I might have to drop some gear. That's it on the end of the count. It's getting pretty dark. We need to get up to the bed while we can still find our way there and sort out what else we're going to do in the morning. So, check the time. It's after sunset. So, let's eat. We'll finish off that MRE. It's going to give us 900 calories, which is more than enough to get us through to breakfast time. Take a drink. How much wood have we got? That one. Six sticks and a couple of bits of coal. Not enough to get a good fire going and get four litres of water on the way. So, let's... We're not fully tired yet. We're going to have to waste three hours. We'll pass time for three hours, as the game calls it. And... At that point, we should be ready to sleep. Oops. We need to take a drink. Carrying 800 calories. We want a 9 hour sleep minimum. Let's go for a 10 hour. I'm not going to give it to us, but we'll try for it. Because we want to wake up in daylight. Yay, which is what we did. Now, we've got some good wood here. So, let's... Get a fire. Go we got some sticks on us. We don't need to worry about those. We'll pick up, need a horse. Pick up those two sticks. Uh, we've got one piece of fur at the back. Take the charcoal. Put it away. Let's get the fire going. Um, just fi I'd better find some water. Use the fire strike. Uh, piece of tinder. And a stick to start the fire. There we go. Throw that on. Take the 
fire up to two hours twenty. I right, two liters. Oops. Right, two liters. Right, what that allows us is some time to finish off sorting all the stuff that we were carrying. Let's have a look at what it was. Uh, but a couple of bits of coal to drop downstairs. Uh, some medicines to put away. Clothes. We can, so we can leave those clothes the way they are right now. No foods to put away. We're, we're getting desperate for foods. Um, we could leave that arrow and that arrowhead here. Got some berries to put in the cabinet. Right. Let's just drop those couple of sticks first. Actually, we'll keep them on us until the water's done, just to be sure that there's enough time on the fire for the water. Let's put those berries in the cabinet. Wrong draw. That draw. There we go. Um, there we are. That's for all of them. There we go. Uh, nothing else to go in there. Arrowhead and arrow into the workbench cupboard. There it is. Put that into there, it just saves a little bit of weight. Medicine cabinet, we said, wasn't it? So, mine made medicines in the second drawer. We used. Do we need to carry two stims? I'm not sure that we do. Uh, what we'll do is we'll put all of those painkillers in there. We'll put that bottle of disinfectant in there. Um, we need to make another Raishi tea. It's one thing we do need to do. Carrying one too many of them. If we're carrying three rosehip teas, we don't need to carry four sets of prepared rosehips, so we can put one in there. Raishi teas, I'm not too worried about because we've got antibiotics. I'm so hungry. So I'll keep that down to one at the moment, but I want to use these rosehip teas as an alternative to the painkillers and try and keep the painkillers as long as possible. Um, there's a, a major weight difference between them as you can see. This is one dose for 0 0.1 of a kilo, whereas this is six doses, for, well three doses in actual fact, because you take two tablets at once. So that's three doses for the same weight. Um, here you've got three doses uncooked and it's still 50% 50, 50 more than the weight of a full bottle of painkillers. So I want to try and keep these painkillers as long as possible. Right, let's go back up and check on the water. Seventeen minutes till melted. Let's just pass that time. One hour two so until boiled. One hour six. I think just for safety, we'll add an extra stick, and then we'll just drop the surplus stick in the pack there. Takes it down to twenty-six kilos. He is hungry and thirsty. Oops, so let's see 
what we can do about that. Well, I think two cattails. And we'll take a drink out of there. I should just get him off our back for a bit. It's mid morning, 52 minutes till boiled, 50, an hour and four on the fire. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an hour's reading on this second fire making book. I could eat anything right now. That's that done. And then the fire's just going out. We we'll take the water. Take the water. Um, we'll drop two litres on the table over here. Just start building up water supplies here. These are our um, reserve food stocks for when we move on to this map. I really don't want to touch them, but if we have to, I will. Now then. We really need to drop some of this weight of books, and the easiest way to do that is by reading them. Um, I don't want to do that inside because of cabin fever risk. Even though we're going to be heavily offsetting that shortly. So what I'm going to do. This one I remember. I'm going to drop the coal here. And let's go. Oh, he's ravenous. See food's becoming an issue now. only 300 calories but it is quite heavy so let's just eat that eat two of them that gives us about 600 calories just top of the hydration with that And we'll drop that excess can over here. So and step outside the back door. Hopefully the weather's good. Uh, we back up into the corner, we're out of the wind, and the snow's not falling straight on us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get this boot researched. So we're going to do that in two hour steps. I need anything right now. now it says research is complete on that. Okay. Let's switch to the frozen angler. Or harvesting um, what what's the difference in skills terms so carcass harvesting 25% right now 25% reduction in meat harvesting time can harvest 50% frozen carcasses by hand 10% reduction in hide or gut harvesting times so that's actually quite useful um, ice fishing, base ice fishing skill. Don't really know what we're doing yet. So that actually, we probably want to get that done. Oh, there we are. Fire starting, skill level three. How's the temperature? Feels like 11 degrees. 
we've got the time to do some more reading. Um, that's research fully completed. Frozen Angler, let's use that. Let's get two hours done. We'll do this in short stretches in case a blizzard moves in. We don't want to get hypothermia while we're reading. Now, he needs to eat a little bit before he reads anything else, so... We'll eat a pair of these. And we're going to have to take some of that food off the table upstairs. We've got no choice. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to push for the full three hours on this. Need to eat soon. Because that will let me drop two books. Research completed. Okay. So, we're a nice fishing novice. What does that let us get? A, a get? Ice fishing. Fishing time reduced by 5%. Right, fishing time is reduced by 5% and an 8% chance on lo of line break on catch. So, less chance of the line breaking. The fire starting at level 3. Six base 65% chance to start fires, they last 10% longer, and we can start fires without tinder. So that's starting to get us up there. Sunset coming in. Probably time to get indoors. We don't really have enough light. So let's actually, let's get across and use the lantern. We're not going to need it for very long. Come on, it's there somewhere. We just saw it. There it is. What have we here? So those two books we've read, we can drop in here. That's going to save us a kilo. So that's research fully completed. Research fully completed. That saves us a kilo of carrying weight. Next one, I think, is either the archery or the carcass harvesting. Oh, it's Frontier Shooting Guide. So we've got three books about shooting. This one's archery skill, which we probably do want to get... Um, done as quickly as possible. Right, so we're going to need to take some of that food from over here. I think the dog food is probably going to be the one that we take. And back to the bed. What we want to do is put the lantern out. Take almost anything about now. You're going to in a minute, mate. Just patience. Right, I'll we'll put the lantern on there for now. There's the bed. Hmm, right. We're back into this food situation. Um, we'll take that granola. We're going to have to start harvesting reishi and rose hips just to for the calories, no mind any healing qualities, because the food situation is getting quite dire. We could take the rifle and go on a deer hunt, which would buy us a bit of time. Um, that's one option. Right, we probably need to pass some time. Yeah, we're not tired enough to sleep till sunrise, so it's past time for three hours. I know a lot of people feel that it's just a complete waste to do this. Waste of calories, waste of hydration. Um, right. I'm going to eat those two. Take a drink. I mean, we're in a reasonably good position. It's just we're short of food. Um, and that's primarily because we don't have the bow and arrow. Right, bed. 
We can now sleep at least eight hours. I'm going to go for nine. We've got the calories for it. Walking up in daylight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the. I need to find food. I'm going to drop the gunnery books here. We don't need to carry them with us. Well, I'll I'll keep the basic gunnery one with us and the basic archery one because of where we're going, it'll give us the option to read them. Um. put them on there to show that we haven't read them if I remember rightly these are like 25 hours each so you know when what we're doing next we're not gonna have time for uh, we're gonna have to take one of those cans eat one of those cans of dog food again Drink one of those, no. Drink one of those summit sodas for the calories. Um, it's, we'll probably need to pick up one of those liters of water as well. How much water have we got left now? Just under a liter. Yeah, we're going to have to take one of these with us. Got a couple of cans to drop downstairs. Now, we're not doing any special preparation, but what we're going to do is we're going to move out onto the full-on muskeg map. Uh, right, cans. Oh, sorry, cans. Drop and drop. And what we're taking out to fall on muskeg. There should be a toolkit out there. But on the chance that there's a hacksaw there, I'm going to take the quality tools with us. There should also be a cook pot there. If not, we'll just have to make do with cans. Now, how many pieces of metal have we got left? Looks like three. Which is okay for immediate repairs in here. Alright, we've got nothing else that we're going to take with us. We're just going to scavenge our way round. We're going to have to go to the forge. So what we're going to do today, especially while it's such a lovely day, feels like minus one though, but it's a lovely clear day. Not a huge amount of wind that I can tell. We're going to get a head start heading across to Forlorn Muskeg. And have we... just check. Yes, we have surveyed the camp office. Not that we've got a lot of charcoal. We could have picked up some more. We're gonna grab some sticks on the way out though. We want at least enough sticks to be able to make an hour's fire, just in case we get a hypothermia risk. And Eight sticks should do it. No. We know he's down there somewhere, but where? There he 
There he is. If we are very quick, we can get around up here onto the top. We can dodge him. He's still down there. It's, I don't think we, oh, we can get through there. Excellent job. Looks like we're past him. Yeah. And this could be a sprain. I hope not. But it's possible. Now, he did have a friend reply to his howl. Who I thought was way over yonder. But could be up ahead up here. So, let's just continue to be a little bit cagey. And... try to not get caught and ambushed. I'd rather not be fighting wolves as we leave Mystery Lake because there's every opportunity to fight them once we get into Forlorn Muskeg, which is where we're heading now. We've searched this guy. Come on. Yes. And I believe we also searched those containers. Yep. The question is, did we leave any supplies in here? We did. We left a bunch of coal take that piece of firewood with us. And there we are, moving through into Mystery Lake. Uh, moving through into Forlorn Muskeg, sorry. Now remember, we've got no range weapons with us. I can't even remember if there's any rabbits on this map, so I'm not bothering to pick up stones. What I do want to do, though, is I want to get up here first. Just have a look ahead. Try and get a view of that. Oh, there is a wolf over there. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to slip this way. There's always a risk of a bear on this side. But if I can stay away from that wolf, we can get down into this pond and get the cattails, which will take care of our immediate food issue. head. Absolutely did not need it. We no longer need tinder of any type. Now all I'm going to do on this pond is take the cattails um, simply because we need the snack food. Some, some over there. Now 
what I want to try and do is dodge that wolf. Hopefully he's reversed his patrol and he's now heading back the other way, away from us. Some reishi mushrooms there to harvest. Let's just have a look, can we see that wolf? Just also checking to see if there's a bear down on the ice. There often is. Don't see one. Right, let's get... And that's immediately put us into overweight. I don't see the wolf, which is good news. And on this map, it's definitely head on a swivel territory. The wildlife can come at you from any direction. Even directions that are closed off to you because of weak ice. There's some cattails there that I want to try and grab. It does put me a little bit close to the wolf patrols, but we need the calories. I just drop those cattails I did the clanging you can hear in the background guys is not the game that's my wife preparing uh, Sunday lunch so apologies for that I right, just could eat anything look to see I can't see a bear wandering which is good news I don't see a wolf on that hill which is where he normally turns up I really want to get these cattails that are just a little bit off the railway lines because we desperately need the calories. Come on. Right, now let's start working in towards that derailment watching out and keeping both ears wide open for any noises we've got crows squawking away somewhere but I can't see them oh, there they are that's probably a deer carcass over there but we're not going to go get it well, the first two Two or three times that I played this map, you know, I, I used to just blindly wander along this railway in complete ignorance of the perils of this map. Now, the next question is... Oh, there's the wolf. Right, so that kind of blocks us from going on that side of the... Tr oh, there's two of them. for in here. More coal for the forge. An accelerant I'll take. A wilderness kitchen. Cooking skills upgrade. Excellent. Um, a thin wool sweater. I'm not sure we need that. I'm not sure we need those antibiotics just now either. Um, we'll put that there. I was hoping there would be food here, but there's not. Piece of coal. What's in this box? Empty. So, no food here at all. Damn. That's really screwing us over. Right, now, that thin wolf sweater I don't think can do anything for our clothing. 
Um, unless, unless it's better than this sweatshirt, which I'm not sure it is. Let's just pick it up and check. So, and it's in a horrible condition. Same weight as the sweatshirt. Same protective factor. Better waterproofing. If it was repaired up, I'm not convinced that it's going to give more windproofing, though. The sweatshirt seems to be... Definitely, the sweatshirt has the advantage on windproofing, but this has the advantage on waterproofing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it and leave it here against future needs what states that bedroll 62% as opposed to our bedroll well, which is at 92 so how much are we carrying 33.18 I was hoping there would be a hacksaw here Take those antibiotics. And I'm going to use the flare gun. Because we've got two wolves on the other side of the train. And we do need to search the other side of the train. Got a piece of scrap metal down there. It is. I hear you. Oh, there you are. Well, that's got them both running. I would have preferred to have hit him, but I had to snatch the shot to chase him off. Let's keep your eyes on him. He's running. They're not. Ru they haven't run far enough. We're not safe yet. Check, there's no bear out there. A lot of fir wood lying around here. Which is more than I'm used to. Uh, wolf's away over there. You see there's a container and some coal down there. Which we do need. There's usually something under this tree as well. There's another piece of scrap metal there. So, if we get around the train, just making sure there's no bear out there. Yeah, you see. Cedar firewood. Cedar firewood. Cedar firewood. We can leave that inside the, the train. Scrap metal, dog food, granola bar. Hope nobody needs this anymore. Can open a granola bar, more scrap metal, more coal. There's a medical kit there. There's the bear. There he is. Just walking off screen between the gaps there. So. Piece of cloth is useful. We don't need that piece of paper. I can eat a horse. I'll get through there. I want to get through that gap there. If we crouch, can we do it? No. Well, one advantage to the bear being on the prowl is that he seems to have chased the wolves off. Cotton took. Useful. We 
did see a first aid kit between two of the carriages. There it is. This will come in. Painkillers. Very handy. The bear's over there. Drop that cedar now. Right, so we've got nothing else to carry away from here, I believe. We've got three books now. Got a bunch more painkillers, which is excellent news. Um We've got a cotton tube that we can rip up for cloth if we need to, but we don't need to. We're carrying 15. We've got 10 pieces of uh, metal, 12 pieces of coal, which is going to be great when we get across to the forge, which I think is going to be our next place to visit because we're going to have to get across and get a bunch of arrowheads made so that we can start thinking about getting the bow and arrow sorted out. Now, what time of day is it? It's midday. I need to create a save point here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bedroll down, rest for an hour to create a, a save point, and that will be the end of the video. Um, I don't want to sleep. I just want to pass time. So thank you very much. We've come to the end of another week, and we're still surviving. Please give the video a like if you are enjoying it. Um, do follow the channel and follow the channel, subscribe to the channel, and please check the video description for links to my Discord, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, and also to Patreon. I aim to grow the channel and need all the support I can get, and I appreciate it very much. So take care, everybody. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you every day at 5 o'clock UK time with a new video here on YouTube. And I'll see you tomorrow. From me, bye for now.